Hi, I was hoping to get this video out a lot earlier than uh, I am doing, but when you read uh, 92 books in a year, it takes an awful lot of deciding which are the ones that you want to highlight for books of the year. Uh, normally I read sort of 40 to 50 books a year, but with lockdown and so much time at home, it, it went up to 92, but yeah, it is what it is. So what did I read this year out of my 92? The very first book I read was uh, Joe Nesbo, his 12th book in his Harry Holder series. I'm a big fan of Joe Nesbo and I love this series. So this was a Christmas present and of course it was the first book that I read this year. What else did I read? I read a lot of um, books on Kindle and I read, a, I seem to read quite a lot of dystopian this year. Uh, maybe it's the times we're living in. The Handmaid's Tale. I finally got around to reading The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. And another one that I read in a similar, it also looked at sort of a, the role, the, the way that women's um, change in, in dystopian novels, the, the way women are perceived, was Vox by uh, Christine Doucher. And that was a really sort of unnerving book to read because it was, um, they say on average, a woman speaks 20,000 words a day. I, I don't believe that really. But in this book, Vox, a woman is limited to 100 words a day. And you know, they've got a, a band around their, head, their wrists that gives them electric shocks if they exceed that 100 words. And that includes little girls as well. It includes nightmares, it dreams, and you have to really think about the 100 words that you're going to say. If you had to think, well, to have, if you only had 100 words, what would you say? I mean, it, it's a horrifying thought. That was another one that I read. Um, so that was that one. I, what other ones did I read? The, um, oh, words, I've got it on the roll written down here. Um, I, magical Realism. The Toy Makers by uh, Robert Dinsdale. That was a really, really nice one to read. It's Toy Stops toy shop that comes alive during winter during the uh for december it's there and the toys are magical but the rest of the year it's all locked down and the toys are being built and it's the story of the family of papa jack and his two ch uh, sons emil and casper and kathy who comes into their lives and it is really good if you love magical realism you'll love this one couple of books that I was quite disappointed with. Um, Black Dahlia by James Elroy. I, it is, so this was based on um, a real true true crime story about this woman who was found just cut into two. So it is sort of a, a fictional account of a, a true life crime. And I was really looking forward to that one, but I was slightly disappointed. It was, I, I didn't like the two policemen there. I, th I think that was the main thing. I did not like the, the characters of the policemen. And yeah, I, I, I hyped myself up that up to that book because I love crime fiction. And I, I did find that left me rather flat. And um, sadly, uh, John Boyne, the, the Thief of Time. Um, I, I love um, uh, uh, other books that of his are read. They're, they're part... They're part the Invisible Furies. I can't remember the title now. It'll come to me as soon as I finish this video. Um, again, I was disappointed. It was the idea of a man who doesn't die, who's sort of 250 years old and is living his life. And I, I don't know. It just, for me, it just went, it just went on too long and it, it focused on the events rather than the person. I, I don't know. I was disappointed with that one, but I, I, I know his new one. I'm looking forward to reading, getting hold of looking um, and reading his new one. What else did I read? Um, Taxidermist's Daughter, Kate Moss. Gothic. Loved it. Um, a nice gothic romancy bit. I read a lot of young adult books as well. Um, Patrick Ness's. I've read a couple of his. This one, The Th Knife of Never Letting Go, I loved. The rest of us just live here. It did really do it for me. Uh, Sarah Waters, I read. 
Um, what else? Sisters of the Winterwood by Reni, uh, Rena Rosner. A nice magical historical fairy tale um, full of symbolism and based loosely on Christina Rossetti's Goblin Market. A murder one that I found intriguing. Um, having read The Curious Incident of the Dog, in, um, Dog at Night Time years ago and seen the film, uh, seen the stage play a couple of times. The Colour of B. B Larkham's Murder by Susan J. Harris. That was a, a very interesting read. It was t based, whereas the guy in Curious Dog is, is autistic, this one has got, um, and I can't remember what it's called, I think it's Synesthesia, something like that. I've, you'll have to correct me in the comments, but it's where you see colours, where you, you can't recognise people, but you recognise colours. He can recognise the person's colour, but he couldn't, he couldn't tell you what his face looked like, but he could tell you what, what colour he was. And so this murder, he knows that he's looking for a colour. He knows that the person with this colour is the murderer, but you couldn't tell you who he is. And it's a really, I found that a really intriguing book to read uh, if you like murders. Um, the book of the, oh, excuse me, the book that I loved that has to be my number one this year. And it's this one, A Ghost in the Throat. This was beautiful. It's almost multimedia because we've got poetry, we've got diary, we've got autobiography, we've got... It was absolutely gorgeous um, by Doreen Negrifa and it's the story of the, the narrator is a young mother and she is intrigued by the story of Eileen O'Connell who is um, a 17th century uh, Irish woman whose husband is murdered and she writes this poem which is almost, it, it's one of Ireland's famous poems, it's the key of Art, Art O'Leary, the key for Art O'Leary. And in the book, the narrator is trying to find the poet because Eileen O'Connell has almost been erased from, from history. You don't know an awful lot about her. And it's the poet, the narrator's search for this poet and discovering the poem, discovering, and it is just absolutely beautiful. And this is my book of 2020. This is the book that I hadn't known anything about it. It was just purely by chance when I, on the, the day when I was allowed to go to London and go shopping, I went to Foils and it just leapt out on me, it leapt out at me from the shelves. I knew nothing about it, but the cover, the title, it just said, buy me. And I am so glad I did. So that is my recommendation. If you've not read it, go out and read it because you will love it. So that is a sort of like a little snapshot of what I read in 2020. How many I will read this year, I don't know. We'll see. And um, yeah, let me know in the comments below, what was your book of the year? Did you read any of the ones that I've mentioned today? And uh, you know, you know the form. If you like the video, like it, you know, subscribe, notify, and I'll catch you next time. So happy reading. Bye.